in a small workshop tucked away in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Something very sharp is taking shape. A great knife can change your life. Adam Simha, the founder of MKS Knife, is handcrafting custom culinary knives. His blades are sought after by notable chefs, as well as everyday home cooks. I had been taking classes at Mass Art. I took the bladesmithing class without thinking too much of it. And after day one, it was just the smell of electricity and fire and steel, and this is pretty, pretty cool. Armed with a degree in physics, a fascination for metalwork, and passion for being in the kitchen, Simha meets with customers before the design process begins. I will hand them different shapes. So these are unground blades, or they're wooden blanks, uh, templates. And I say, don't overthink it. Just go from one to the next to the next. I'm listening to what they're saying, but I'm trying to keep them focused on something else so that I can just watch their hands. He says the hand often does more of the talking than the person who is holding it, giving him a sense of which knife is right for you. All right, so you see, it goes exactly to number two. Mm -hmm. All right, I do it. Felt it immediately. Yep. That's interesting. So why? Yeah, I don't. I've never liked a knife that's that's that shape. That just doesn't work for me. From cutting to drilling to grinding to selecting the proper handle materials, Simha shapes every knife with precision and care. This is gonna be a good little knife. And it shows no culinary task is off limits. You make oyster knives also? I do. Uh, I have one that is um, in process. So you can see this oh, is what wow. it looks like when it's all glued together. Um, there's the blade and then the handle Tomorrow, when it's all cured, we'll get fared in and shaped to fit in someone's palm. And how about a chef who needs to get through multiple crates of avocados? There is a knife for that, too. The top serrated part is sharp, so that what you'd use to cut around the avocado. Mm -hmm. Don't put the knife down. Twist off half the avocado, hook the pit out with the hook. Okay. So no, none of that. And then use this, this part, which is blunt, this is smooth, to scoop the flesh, go to the next one. So never put it down, no spoon necessary. But it's not only restaurant chefs who are using Simha's knives. During the pandemic, he began catering to home cooks. It shifted the demographic 180 degrees in a month. Obviously, a lot of industry folks were out of work, but people were home, stuck home, cooking, realized their knives were awful. From start to finish, Simha takes about six to nine months to complete a custom knife. But once finished, that knife will become more than just another kitchen tool. I have the opportunity and privilege to bring that into someone else's life and change that for the positive, to help them up their game in the kitchen. Ideally, if I do my job right, fall in love with this tool and get so excited about it that they want to use it, they look forward to using it, they think about what they're going to make for dinner that night. The light as air grace of ballerinas who literally dance on their toes. When you're on point, these are your toes. You're basically standing on them. What helps a dancer stay aloft? Point shoes. The shoe has to be a second foot and it fits like a glove. So how do you feel? Fitting a ballet dancer's feet is harder than it sounds. For decades, Paula Parkas has been a go-to expert for both professional and amateur dancers. Okay. What is in a point shoe? It's got on the outside, a leather on the outside also. And, and both of muscle. those are called sh the, shank. the shank. It gives you the strength to stand on point. There's no rock in there. There's no wood, block, or anything. Just fabric and glue. Parkas owns Dancer's Image in Newton, which outfits all kinds of dancers from head to toe. She danced as a child, yeah, later becoming a dance mom. I have two dancing daughters. One was a professional ballerina in Europe for 25 years. Ballet is a notoriously precise and strenuous art form. Injury or permanent damage can result from poorly fitting shoes. Parker says sizing is a challenge. Not only is every foot different, but point shoes often have to accommodate custom padding or toe spacers, which provide extra support. My job is to make sure the shoe fits well, doesn't damage her, and 
looks great. The shoe feels really tight on my toes. On your bunion bone? Yes. How is it doing on your pinky? Needham resident Claire Wang is 12 years old and has been dancing ballet since the age of six. It's one of my favorite things to do. I usually practice around two times a week. It's difficult to make it look easy. Can you parallel? And put your right foot on point and go ahead up. When you first had them on your feet, what was it like? It was exciting, but it was really painful too. I think what I'm going to do is make your shoe a little bit wider so there's not that much pressure on your bunion. At Dancer's Image, customers view their feet on a monitor as Parkus makes adjustments. See how nice and flat you are on the platform? Right foot on point and go ahead up. Vigilance is crucial, says Margot Parsons. She's a former dancer with a long career as a teacher at area universities and ballet companies. Most of the students are not going to become dancers, so you want to leave your dance experience with your hips intact, your knees intact, and your feet intact. You want to leave with all your body parts still working. <laughs> So pretty, but Paula emphasizes to young dancers and their parents to keep your feet strong and healthy and dancing mm. on point can be extremely harmful to your feet. So having the right shoes are key. Be careful for sure. Back to Adam Simha and his knives. Uh, he's made knives for a number of chefs that have been featured on Chronicle, including Jamie Bissonette and Douglas Williams. Uh, they really are a thing of beauty. And he does, in fact, have a patent on that avocado knife. So no reverse engineering <laughs> from Chronicle. <laughs> All right, coming up, a craft handed down through generations.